dive right in. I wish they were all that easy, but unfortunately they're not. So that was already a pre-dug hole that we dug in the middle of the winter, but this is still my method of choice versus a shovel because I knew it was gonna be pretty dang easy. It's got a little lock pin here. You can use these as hammers. If you're looking for a pair, make sure and see the link below. All right, so we went 32 inches in the ground. Why did you go so deep? Isn't that a little excessive? Don't you think that's a little too much? I gotta pay for all that concrete that's gonna go in that hole? Dang straight, why? What a lot of people don't think of when they do a privacy fence, think of that wind load. How much wind is gonna be hitting? How much airspace are you blocking now because of that fence? We need enough concrete to hold that post up, keep it from blowing over. So we're not gonna use one bag. We're not gonna use two bags. We're gonna use three or four until that hole is filled. Why did you go 32 inches in the ground? You gotta go 32 because you gotta get beneath frost line. Typical frost line here in Wyoming, 27 to 24. With the bottom of the concrete going past the frost line, there's a lot less chance of that post ever coming back out of the ground due to frost heaving. Things to be thinking about. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and start with three bags of concrete and we're gonna mix it and throw it in the hole. We're gonna mix it in this awesome wheelbarrow. You can put a lot of weight into one of these. I think we did a video on it. Make sure to check it out right here. You don't want it super dry to the point where it's nice and clumpy because you're gonna have a hard time doing what we're about ready to do next. You wanna make it uh, Probably about the consistency of yogurt. Something like that. Uh, curdled milk, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure. Now some of you are saying, you don't have to mix that, just pour it in dry. Please. We summed everything up in this video right here. Save me the time. Okay, so I should have stopped pouring the concrete in the hole like two seconds ago. We wanna be able to cover the concrete with about like four inches of dirt, three, four inches, just so that that way you can grow the grass back on top. But also, what does that three or four inches do? We happen to call that the frost lock. So here in Wyoming, what happens when the ground freezes, if you surface your concrete, all your watershed's gonna go down alongside your post, cause it to come back out of the ground. You don't want that. If you bury that concrete just a little bit, when the ground freezes, gonna freeze over on top, locking that concrete ball into the ground. So because I poured just a little too much in, I'm gonna take it back out. You want it about like that. If I pick it up, it doesn't naturally form to the shovel. It does a little bit, but if I shake it, it flows right in. All right, so thanks for checking into the video, guys, of how to fill a hole full of concrete. We'll catch you on the next one. Have a good dang day. See you later. We got a set of posts. That's right. So we have our posts now. You have to figure out which end goes into the concrete. This end goes into the concrete. That's our top. So what we're gonna do. No, there's no post that goes up inside this. So if you're wondering where that post is, it's not in this video. It doesn't have to be there. But if you hang a gate, it has to be there. Or if you're using cheap vinyl from a big box store, you're gonna want that post. But we didn't get this final from there. We're good. Remember, quality. Quality, 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 quality. If after a hailstorm your vinyl fence looks like Swiss cheese, that's yeah, not quality. So we're gonna go ahead and put our hands at the top here and we're gonna just wiggle it, causing that post to go down. Now, another thing that you can do, you can do the jerking method. Lift it up and slam it in the ground. But you're able just to pull it in the ground just like that jerking method where it goes right in. So you're gonna take your level, you're gonna level up two sides, just pick two. They're all man-made, so they're all uniform. Not like a wood post, but you don't have to keep going from which way? Just, just pick two. You're gonna wanna pick two separate sides. So you're gonna wanna pick a face and a side. Okay, that's perfect there. Let's put some dirt back around it. What does the dirt do? It's gonna help keep the post stay there. It's going to help suck the moisture out of the top of the concrete, causing it to set up a little bit faster. 
It's also gonna keep the post from bouncing back and forth in a windstorm. While the concrete is setting. So we didn't talk about height. When do you wanna stop shoving the vinyl posts in the concrete? If you're doing something like this, where you already have the holes routed in the post, well, you need to make sure that the bottom of the bottom hole is still exposed because if that goes in the concrete, you're gonna have a really hard time getting the rail to go through the concrete into that hole. So that needs to be above ground. So the bottom of this is gonna be the very bottom of the fence. So by the time we go to install this fence, we're probably gonna have about inch to an inch and a half air gap underneath our fence. The closer you go to the ground, the less gap you're gonna have. And if you're installing a post from a big box store and you're using brackets because there is no holes, you need to measure your panel, accommodate for some post at the very top like we did here, and make sure that you have enough posts sticking out of the ground so that you can fasten that panel to that post. All right, let's go get some bracing because we gotta brace this thing up. Okay. Oh, I can already feel the wind coming along. It doesn't hurt just to have an extra one here. Yes, all right. Winning, we're here. You see how ridiculous this looks? You don't need this. That's a wasted step. Don't do that. That's what the dirt's for. It doesn't take long for the concrete to get hard around the post to help it stay uniform. And as you can see, I'm pulling quite a bit of force on it and it just bounces right back to its natural position. Now, if you're convinced it needs a little bit more, what you can do is you can step on your dirt just a little bit. That's gonna help hold it in place. Just the same as that bracing. All that work, and it's still level. Boom. All right, so how long until you can start building on it? So typically what we do is we wait one day. Sometimes we'll finish setting our posts in concrete around five o'clock and we're back there the next day at eight o'clock starting to build the fence. I mean, we're not going really hard on the fence, but we are assembling it. And that is a 15 hour window. You can actually hurt the post before you can actually hurt the foundation if you're dealing with vinyl. See, that wasn't so hard. You got this. We got all the faith in you. As long as you guys use enough of that concrete. Now, if you guys want to see how to set vinyl posts in a straight line by eyesight, make sure and see that video right here. And if you guys want to see how to build a section of vinyl privacy fence, make sure and catch that video right here. This is Dan with SWI. We are Wyoming's Fence Company, and we hope you have a good dang day.